Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video. We're starting this one up right where we left the other one off. So if you didn't see our first video on this cool 1977 Bally 8-Ball classic game, they're blowing me up on this phone. If you didn't see uh, our previous video on this game, go check it out. We got this in years ago, and it's been in storage. We've got a gentleman that's just dying to buy one, so we're fixing this thing up for him. Um, so we brought it in on the first video we plugged everything up and the game came right up and started working can you even believe that it's pretty dirty play field's a little beat up um, but it did come up and it still runs so the, the power supply had been hacked up a little bit uh, by somebody hacking in a different style of connector because the old connector had burned up so bad so we took all that off and put a new one on it and that kind of sums up the first video. So we've got it up and running even better now. But we're, we're going to work through the back box even more in future videos. Obviously, we've got a display there that doesn't work and stuff like that. We've got to get everything absolutely 100%. But you know what we're going to do next? We're going to work on this play field. Now, my brother, Joey. I'm Ron, by the way. Most people think I'm Joey because I say Joe's Classic Video Games. But that's the name of the store. I'm Ron. Right? But Joe is actually going to help us work on this one, so because we're trying to expedite getting it repaired. So what he's going to do is tomorrow, whenever he comes in, he's going to clean up this play field. Now it needs paint, so <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is clean. We're going to take everything off of it and clean, 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 clean. All right. And then we're going to repaint in this video part of this play field to touch it up. So you've got some pretty bad wear around this pop bumper. But it's not the end of the world, folks. That's going to clean right up. You're not even going to know it's there. You're going to say, wow, he did a pretty good job on that. At least that's my hope. Right? And then the, the other thing that we have to do, and this just, I hate this, people. I hate this. A lot of these machines have mylar on them, and so the mylar is literally just a sticker that goes on the play field that's clear that protects the paint from wear. So in front of your pop bumpers, you often get wear on the play field because the, uh, whenever the kicker hits the ball, the ball grinds into the paint a little bit, and eventually it chips it away. And so you get heavy wear in front of the kickers, usually. So a lot of times these games will have little mylar half circles in front of the kicker. You can see the outline of it right there. Sometimes they were put on by the factory. Sometimes they were put on um, by someone later. And if you look, you can see it on this one too. See it? So what someone has done, that mylar often gets dirty and scuffed and doesn't look very good. So what someone has done is pulled the mylar off the play field. And when they did, it pulled the paint off the play field underneath the mylar. So this is one of my big kind of, I don't know what the best word for it is. I mean, I don't mind what anybody does to their machine. Right? Do whatever you want to your machine. But it's not as easy as people think it is to remove that damn mylar. Now, a lot of people, they don't work on games this old. They work on newer machines that came out in the 90s that, uh, or, or even later that had mylar on them. And the play fields are in better shape, right? So on those, you can freeze the mylar off. So you can get freeze spray, spray it on it, and then carefully peel it up as you go. Or you can use a heat gun and heat up the glue to where it softens it and then carefully peel it off. And it works pretty good on like the more modern games because the, the surface of the play field is in better shape, right? But then people get the assumption that you can do it on all of these old games, and you can't. Whenever you do it on an old game, you get crap like this. Look at this crap. So what you're seeing here is the, 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 um, the remnants of the residue of the glue, the residue of the glue, right? That's what this is. So somebody peeled it up, and as they did, it was kind of popping up, and it left a little bit of glue where it didn't come off on the mylar. What was probably happening is this part was already lifted, and that's probably what looked ugly and why they wanted to pull it off. But then whenever they peeled the rest of it off, it ripped all the paint off. So now the playfield's permanently damaged. The reason that that happened is because the playfield is damaged anyway. So look at, look at this. 
See all of the uh, some people call that different things, and I, you know I'm sure I've got the wrong name for it, but some people call it planking, alligatoring. Um, I usually call it just planking. You know, the the paint is starting to starting to split away. So the top of this plywood that the playfield is made out of, the top layer of the ply the plywood is separating. Okay, so I'm giving you an extreme close up so you can see how ugly it is. Right now. Here's where we're playing from. It looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is clean this up and get it as clean as I can. Or Joe's actually going to do it. He's going to clean this up and get it as clean as, he, as we can. If I have to touch up anything, I will. But I'm hoping that we can get away with leaving it. And then I'm going to spot clear coat just this part. Once I get clear coat on it, it will never wear. It'll look just like it looks right now forever. Or at least as long as I'm alive. Or until somebody uh, abuses it, <laughs> right? So that will save that part of the playfield. And if you go back and look at some of our older videos, I've got several of these that I've worked on. I had one of these were almost all gone. I painted them all back in and made it look pretty decent, I thought. Um, it's actually easier to paint in stuff like these pool balls than it is to paint this in. Because the problem is, I can't just paint that part in or you'll see it. You'll, you'll see that it doesn't match that. Or that, or that, or that, or that, or that, you know? So, I mean, we're going to try it anyway, but I'm not painting this whole damn green play field. That ain't going to happen. So I've got to try to repaint just part of it and make it look similar to what's down there, right? And then I also have to repaint this. So, it's going to be a little rough. So even though it's just one, one color, it's much harder to paint this than if you had to repaint in all that. So we're going to see what happens. So this is what we're starting with. And then uh, Joe's going to come in and clean it up a little bit. And we'll see how clean he can get it. And then I'm going to start painting on it. So it's pretty filthy. Another thing to think about, if you look at this, if you're good with colors, you might see this. Um, how can I point this out? Okay, this paint on this on this uh, uh, apron is fairly white, although it looks kind of, it's kind of got a, like a blue tinge to it. Let me see if I can, you know what I can do? I can use my notepad that I always use. So I have this notepad where we were working on the connectors. That's white. That's not white anymore. It used to be white. It's no longer even close to white. See how yellowed everything is? Right? I mean, look. <laughs> look at this. It's not even close to white. Now, if you think, well, it, was, it wasn't supposed to be white. Okay, well, here's cue balls. I mean, uh, pool balls. Those are certainly supposed to be white. Not even close. Okay, so you got to be careful whenever you touch up stuff um, what colors you use because the entire playfield has yellowed. It's not that the white has yellowed, everything's yellowed. So the green's more yellow than it was originally, the red is more yellow than it was originally, etc. etc. And people say, oh, that's probably from nicotine. It may be, but I think it's just, I think it's inherent in the paint. I think the paint itself has just yellowed. Or it could be the clear coat over it. Right? So they put like a some kind of varnish or spray or something over it. That probably yellowed. If you've ever messed with old uh, oil-based paint, you know over time a white oil-based paint will yellow and you know significantly. So the whole playfield has like a yellow sheen over it. So whenever we try to match the colors, we've got to mix them a little with a little yellow in them actually. You know to make it kind of match because we want it to blend in. We we don't want it to look new. We want it to look old like the rest of it does. So, All right, so that's our little introduction to it. We'll, we'll come back after he cleans it up, and we'll see how it looks, and then we'll get to painting. What do you think about that? Okay, folks, so Joe came in and cleaned it up a little bit, and then we discovered something. It appears that whenever they worked on the, cap, on the uh, game before, that they clear-coated it. So see the reflection uh, from the lights? That's the clear coat that they've somebody sprayed on there, and they did a pretty good job of it. We've cleaned a lot of it with a magic eraser because there's still spots that we need to touch up. 
uh, but by them clearing it, they trapped some of the dirt in, so some of it didn't get completely clean, like this ball trail up here, can't get perfect. And then there's a little bit down here. So they didn't clean it all up before they clear coated, which is kind of a recurring problem we keep running into. But by clearing it, they probably saved this. Remember how we were looking at this and it was, uh, we could see it planking a little bit? Well, since they cleared it, it apparently never chipped away. Um, so we were able to clean it up pretty good and uh, we don't have to worry about that disappearing on us, especially after we put even more clear on it here in a little bit. Um, but as you can see, it cleaned up pretty good and it's got a nice sheen to it even uh, before we wax it. So that's what's going on with that. Now, we've still got our issues here. That I don't think is into the paint. That's just where Joe is getting the kind of the, the glue off. So apparently whoever cleared it was probably the person that pulled the mylar off. Um, but we're going to touch it up. We're going we're gonna to get it. And then we got to touch up around this pop bumper. So this is where we're starting. But you can see that it's already starting to come together pretty good. It's getting there. Alright, so... I ordered a whole bunch more green paint. So we're going to get out all of our green paints and see which one of them is even close. Hopefully we'll find one that's a close match. Um, so the way we do it is we've got all these little acrylic paints that we uh, mix together and uh, come up with the paint that we need to, max, to match the color. So I'm going to get out all of my greens and see if we have one that will match it right out of the bottle. That would be amazing or at least come close to matching it right out of the bottle. That would be even more amazing. So uh, I'll grab my box of paint and we'll look at our greens and see if any of them are even close. Okay folks, so I have pulled out all of my greens. <laughs> I've got a few. I knew I was going to do this game so I ordered even a few more. You can get all of these at like Hobby Lobby or at Michael's or there's probably a place near you that does crafts and stuff. These are just little acrylic uh, paint things. These cost about a dollar a piece or even less. This is two ounces which is enough to last you a ton. Um, and they have different, different shades. And so you kind of want as many as you can get, you know. Um, I've had some that I've had for probably 10 years and they haven't dried out yet. So the stuff has a pretty good shelf life. As long as you keep the lid on it. I have had a few that dr did dry out though and I'm out a dollar. Alright. So uh, if you're going to be doing a bunch of them, you might want to get a ton of them. Now I got all of this kind of idea and this, this kind of uh, way of doing it from uh, Clay at penrepair.com. If you go to penrepair.com, he's the guy that we learned how to fix everything off of, basically. And uh, he used to put up all of his repair logs and stuff for free. And he has several where he's worked on old uh, electromechanical machines, and it's kind of a labor for lo of love for the guy. Uh, and he's done a lot of paint touch-up on them. Uh, and done a great job on a bunch of different machines. So if you ever get time, go check those out. It's penrepair.com, and on the on that main page there, you'll see a bunch where he's touched up old machines, and it's just fascinating watching him do it. But we're going to do it a little bit here today. The way he would probably do it is repaint all the green. I'm not going to do that, man. It's just too much. You could you could, might be able to get away with like just painting part of it and kind of feathering it in, but we're just going to try to paint the area that's screwed up, which is tricky. Okay, so we need a green that kind of matches. Like I said, we can mix them, but if you can get it right out of the bottle, it makes it a lot easier, right? So we'll just go through them and see if any of them are close. So we've got this one. You kind of have to have a good eye at, at telling, not just if they're too light or if they're too dark, but also what direction on the color wheel they are. So this one is too light. It's also... Ooh, I would say a little too yellow, you know, so that's, that one's not going to work. Now if we had to, we could mix this with, with some stuff to get it right, but it's not even close. So we're going to start with something close first. This one, nothing like the green on the play field. <laughs> that is a sour apple, okay? This one is a neon green. 
a bunch of customers came in. So this neon one, obviously, is nothing like it. All right. Okay. This is another neon one. Now we're getting a little closer, but see how it's... It's too green, you know? It's too bright. That ain't it. That ain't gonna work. Pea green, it looks like. What's this one called? Yellow Citron. That ain't it. And Citron Green. That ain't it. Hmm. Getting closer. So this is Kelly Green. But it's a little bit, you're, you're probably not catching it on the camera. Uh, but it's a little bit too intense. Like it's too, uh, it's too bright. But it's really close. So we're going to set it to the side because we might make it out of this, right? Nope. Irish moss. <laughs> Did you even know there were this many greens? Festive green. So this is like a holiday green. And I'm, you know, I'll be damned if that doesn't look like the green that you see. I shouldn't say it like that. Let me rephrase all of it so I'm not cussing. Well, I will be if that does not look <laughs> like the green that you see at Christmas. It really kind of does. But it's a little bit too vivid again. So, no, nope, that ain't going to be it. What's next? Another kind of dull one. See, that one's not, vi not vivid enough. That's light avocado. Okay. This is Hauser medium green. That ain't it. Now we're getting somewhere. Now this one's a little bit too dark. That is forest green. This one on the camera it looks better, but it's 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 a little bit too too much. This one's holly green, so another Christmas one. So there's holly green and festive green, but you know this one it it looks pretty close, but it's too it's too bright as opposed to light and a too dark. <laughs> so it's both at the same time, bright and dark, but it might be close enough. And then this one, hmm, me likey. This is leaf green. And buddy, that's pretty close. So what we might do is try leaf green right out of the bottle and see if it looks anything like it. And then if it doesn't, we might mix one of these other two that are a little bit better because look what we could do. So let's say we put it down and it's a little bit too bright. We could darken it up. Or let's say it's a little bit too, uh, a little bit too dark. We could lighten it up, huh? What do you think about that? Huh? So if you can't get a perfect match, you always want to be a little bit too dark. If it's too light, people will look at it and go, oh, look, they've repainted part of it. But if it's too dark, people, if they even if they notice it, they'll say, oh, it's a little bit dirty. So you would rather that they think it's a little bit dirty than you repainted it, right? So you want to go a little bit too dark, if anything. Um, so that's what we're going to aim for. We're going to try to get it perfect, but if it's not perfect, we're going to go a little bit too dark. And you can see here where we've hit it with the magic eraser. It's a little bit lighter anyway. So I don't know, folks, but we're going to try it. So I'm just going to get a little paintbrush and paint a little bit of it on the playfield. And then if, since it's acrylic, if it's a big mess and it's not right and it's way off, you can just wipe it off because it's just water-based paint. The difference between acrylic paint and enamel paint, or, um, well, I guess enamel will work, is that it's oil-based, so it can't be cleaned up very easily. It can still be cleaned up. but um, So we're going to use acrylic uh, just to make it happen. Another thing we talked about on the other video is that these balls are supposed to be white, so what's, what is supposed to be white is yellow because the entire playfield has yellowed over time, right? So that label on that can is white. Look at the difference between white and what used to be white on the pool balls. This is why you can't really get like a, uh, a paint coat offline or anything. Nobody can really tell you what color this green is because it's yellowed over, over time and your playfield has yellowed differently than other people's playfields and etc. So it kind of needs to be mixed. So while this leaf green may be a pretty good match on my playfield, on yours it might be different. Even one of the other ones might be a better match on yours. And if you look, now that I've mentioned it, you can kind of see the yellow cast on everything, can't you? Everything's a little bit too yellow. 
but it makes it look old like that. And uh, it is old. It's 43 years old, so it'll look good. But uh, let me get a paintbrush, and I'll put a little bit of that on uh, just a couple spots, and we'll see if it looks anything like it. Okay, so I threw a little bit of it on it. Now, you, the, the, I'm looking at the screen here, and it doesn't look the same as it looks here in person. So I put the leaf green on, which is this here. And while it looks okay on the screen, on, here in person, it doesn't quite look right. It's off a little bit. But I also put some here that you may have not even noticed till I just pointed it out. That is the holly green. So I think we're getting lucky, and this holly green is going to be a pretty freaking close match. So what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to wipe off the paint that we put on there because it's still wet. And even if it dried, you could, you could get it off with, uh, with a little bit of water. All right, so we're just going to wipe it right off. Now, another thing that you can do, do you see how in the little spots it kind of stayed on there? So I have painted a little bit of that green on here. You see how it's a little bit, it's a little bit darker? Once you clear it, it will kind of move it into. You can do what Clay called the smear technique. It's where you get a bunch of paint on there, and you just rub it a little bit. And it kind of leaves the paint in the spots that needed the paint, and the paint on the top comes off. So you're not necessarily repainting the whole the whole thing. You're just getting paint on there and then kind of rubbing it into the freaking cracks, right? So that's what we're going to attempt to do. So I'm going to use this holly green, which I think is a little bit better match now that I get it on the playfield, and I'm going to put it on a little bit thicker and then just kind of wipe it off and see if I can kind of blur it in. So let's see uh, let's see how close we get it. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then I'm going to hit it again and uh, see if I can get a, a little more uniform to where it doesn't look quite so splotchy. And then we'll go from there. But it's already much better, I think. Now remember the clear coat too is going to blend it in a little bit. But um, so it's a pretty close match right out of the right out of the bottle. I also did over here. Um, might have to get some on that though. This is a little lighter, but I don't know if the clear is going to blend that in because basically that's just where the uh, yeah it might need a little bit too. That's where uh, the magic eraser started taking the paint up a little bit, getting the adhesive off of it. Okay, so we're getting there. It's unfortunately it's in the worst possible spot. The only place worse than that would be like right here between the flippers, because it's it's where you're going to notice it every time. But we'll see. I might I might try to paint it more to the edge to get a more uniform look. But it's our first little coat, people. It's our first little coat. We'll see what happens on the second one. All right, so I put another coat on, which got it all pretty uniform, and then I, with the towel, just the paper towel, just carefully rubbed off everything that wasn't down in one of the little cracks where something's missing. So what that has left us with is everywhere there was a part of, part of the paint that was lighter, it's now a little bit darker than the rest of the paint because our, our match was not quite perfect, but a little bit darker than what's going on. We still got this little wear mark here that... I mean, I could repaint that whole thing, but then it would stand out too. So you kind of want to just get the paint down in the little spots, right? So whereas before we had a bunch of light areas that were showing up and, and uh, that were obvious to see, now we have a bunch of dark areas that are a little bit harder to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we still have to do this up here, but I'm going to test clear coat just this part to see if that makes it look better. If it doesn't, we'll let the clear dry and then paint back over it again. But I'm pretty happy with how it looks right now. The color is not dead on the money, but it's made it look a lot more presentable where it looks more like wear than it does touch up paint or where there's paint missing. Um, so uh, I think we're much better off. Okay, folks, so this is what it came out looking like with some clear on it. Basically, the paint dried darker than it appeared, and then the clear kind of drew, drew out the contrast in the paint from the other. Now, it still looks better than it did when it was too light, but mm, it could be better. So I may actually end up doing it over again. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to think about it a little bit. Uh, but as for now, I'm going to work on these pop bumpers. So I went ahead and removed them off of the game. They needed to have the skirts replaced anyway, so... I went ahead and took them off. 
and uh, you can see there's heavy wear around the left one. The metal one has a little bit, right? If it was just that, I'd leave it. But this one's heavy enough that it needs something done. This one's pretty much fine. So, it looks much more complicated than it actually is. First of all, you, you need to put the black lines back in. Whenever you do that, it just basically makes it a coloring book. And then the colors that we're missing are yellow and orange. That's it. Uh, since I've got that green that is somewhat of a match, I can make a little line there on the edge to to, uh, to get the little bit of green that's worn back. But, you know, once the black lines are in, you just it's just yellow and orange. It's not that big of a deal. And then over here, same thing. So the first thing to do is to draw it back in. So how do you do that? Let me show you. You use an acrylic paint pen. So it's the same type of paint, water-based, but it's in like a little pen. Paint marker pen. Now you will be very tempted to use a Sharpie to do this. Don't use a Sharpie. The reason you don't want to use a Sharpie is because whenever you clear coat it, the chemicals in the spray paint will, enter, will react with the chemicals in the Sharpie and make it blur and run. And it'll just make a big mess that you just clear coated on the play field permanently. So don't do that. But if you use an acrylic paint pen, if you since it's acrylic paint, it's just water-based paint, um, it's basically the same as dirt. So like uh, this dirt up here that they clear coated in didn't run. <laughs> so once I get that paint on there, if it's acrylic, it'll stay right where it's at. And then whenever you spray over it with the spray paint, you won't have any kind of reaction where it runs or anything like that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to draw my black lines back in. Okay. So you could go through and, and fix everything on the play field. Everywhere that there's a line that's messed up, you could paint it back in. But then you'd have to clear coat the whole play field. Because since it's acrylic, it'll wash right off. I mean, if you literally, if you get it wet at all, it will come right off immediately. Which is a good thing, because it means you can touch up any mistakes. Um, but once you clear coat it, it stays. So like, for instance, when I clear coated this, now it's going to stay that color unless I paint over it. Um, you know, from this angle, it's not as bad, but... Go back and look at the beginning of the, vo of the video, folks. It, uh, it was worse than that. <laughs> so, uh, but we're going to focus on this for now. So I'm going, to, I'm going to draw the lines back on, and then we'll look and see if we can match the paint on this. Okay, so I drew in the missing lines. So now it's just a coloring book. Okay. Now, you actually need to do it again at the end because the lines should be on top. But the reason we do it first is just because it defines the space that needs to paint. I mean, if you, if, if, if you prefer, you can just do it without the lines if you can kind of tell where the orange goes and the yellow goes. But I like to draw it in, and then it's really easy to make sure that you get every part that needs to be orange uh, with your orange, and then you can move on to the next color. Um, so we just have a little bit of yellow down here that needs it, a, do, a little dab of orange maybe, uh, nothing really on that one, two places where, they're need, where it needs yellow, three places where it needs orange, and one place where it needs green on that one. So uh, you'll notice too that once you draw the lines back in, depending on how your art is, a lot of times you could get away with just leaving just the, the black lines back in because it it plays a trick on your mind where it makes it look like the whole thing's there, even though the color is off. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all of my oranges. Maybe we'll do it first, see if I've got something that's even similar, and then we'll throw it in. Orange is a pretty good one where there's only a few oranges, so usually you can get pretty close just by right out of the bottle. So here are my orange choices. I've got this one, bright orange which is nothing like it. <laughs> I've got this one, which is jack-o'-lantern orange, which is nothing like it. I've got this one, which is neon orange. Nothing like it. I've got this one, which is canyon orange. Meh, a little more like it. 
And then I've got this one, which is burnt sienna, which is really a brown, but it's kind of an orangish brown. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, I like this one, but it's not really vivid enough. Like this is more of like a reddish, like a, like it jumps out at you more. So I don't know if this one's, if I mix, if I mix this one to make it darker, it's just going to be real dull looking. So this is bright orange, which is pretty vivid. So I could darken it up and it would stay vivid. But this one is jack-o'-lantern orange, which I don't know, man. I'm thinking maybe I could add some red to it. And maybe a little bit of this burnt sienna. So I think I'm going to see if I can concoct something with these and a little bit of red to get it somewhere near that. Let's see what we can come up with. All right, I threw the orange back in. This is my concoction I came up with. I just mix them in the caps. I've had people say, people don't mix them in the caps. You can use an old piece of cardboard. Or you could use the cap. I don't know, works for me. Um, so I took a little bit of orange a little bit of brown, and then a little bit of red, but I went too far, so then I put a little bit of yellow, which pulled it back the other way. And here we are. It's not far off. Huh? Huh? What you think, huh? Not bad for mixing it in the cap, like you're not supposed to do. See, if you mix it in the cap, you just go rinse the cap out. If you mix it on a piece of paper, you have a piece of paper with paint all over it that you can't rinse off, and then you have to throw it away. That's my thinking. Okay, so uh, now i got to do yellow. So yellow is kind of a tough one. Yellow you can't mix very good. Um, but there's not a ton of different yellows. I know I said that about the uh, orange, <laughs> but let's let's see what kind of yellows we got. Let's see. I'm still digging. Some of these are like le doubles. I think that's Spanish for double. <laughs> More yeller, where are you? Old yeller, looking for you. Oh, there's one that was hiding in the corner. Saffron. Every time I see that, I think of uh, George Harrison. <laughs> Cadmian. I think his was Savoy. Savoy Truffle. Or was that John? I don't remember. Uh, another cadmium. Bright yellow. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we are. That's a frond yellow. As is that. Okay, okay. We'll carry these over. Now, you might notice that some of those look a little more orange. That's usually, though, the kind that it is. And then you also have to try to match the color on the area of the play field that you're doing, which is part of our problem here. That area is lighter, as you see, because of whenever we clean the, the, uh, the residue from the mylar off, it lightened up a little bit because we were, had to get on it to get it off. Okay, so, uh, and I'm, the way, reason I look at the bottom of it is because you're looking at the actual paint. If you look at the little thing on the cap, that's not always the right color. Um, so you're just looking for something that looks similar. This one, it's a little light and it looks a little weak, but that one looks a little dark to me. Whoop. That one uh, looks a little, looks a little light, but maybe. 
and that one a little light. Okay, so now I'm going to take the cap off. And usually, well, not this one. Usually you've got some paint on the bottom of the cap, so you can kind of lay the lid down and compare it to the paint on the play field. Shake your yoo-hoo. You guys can't tell that good. That looks pretty damn close to me. That's our front runner. Next we'll try this one. This is so much easier whenever I'm doing it with both hands. This one's definitely too light. This one. This one's a pretty good one. The other thing about yellow is that it's thin, so you have to either put it on real thick or do multiple coats. Uh, I don't know, folks. I think I like that one better. I'm going to go with that one because it's a lot... Well, hmm. No, nah, I'm going back to this one. I like this one. I think this one's the actual color. Okay, and again, you can mix them if you want. Like if I put a little bit of this one in to that one to make it a little better. Okay, so I'm going to paint in those couple spots that need it and a couple spots over here that need it and I'm going to do several coats so that it can dry and I'm going to do them thick too, nice and thick because you don't want the old stuff, the bare wood showing through and yellow is the thinnest color pretty much so it's harder to cover anything. So uh, we're just going to go over it and 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 over it. All right, folks, so she's still drying. From a glance, though, we're looking pretty good. I uh, I used the other green. The green I was originally going to use, I used up there because it's not faded up there, and it matched pretty good. So I'm still thinking about this down here. I don't know. I think I might wait till we put the stuff back on the play field and just see how much it bugs me. The whole thing is... I don't know if I can make it any better, so. But maybe I'm still the the jury is still out on that one, folks. These up here look pretty good. What do you think? So uh, next up, we're gonna put a little clear coat on it, and then after that, uh, we're gonna put the play field all back together, wax it, and see how it looks with everything mounted on it. You got to remember, whenever you're working on stuff like this, you're you're specifically messing with one little thing, trying to get it normal, like trying to get it right. But really, the whole game is the thing. You know what I mean? So you don't really notice the one little thing that you're working on. So you try to get it the best you can, but it doesn't have to be mint. So I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to put some clear coat on up there to lock in what I painted. Then we'll let it dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll wax it and start putting all the accoutrements back on, which we have over here on this one. And we, We've ordered some new pop bumper caps and all that kind of stuff. So that, that will help it look a little better. But we're definitely getting there. All right, folks, so Joe is putting it all back together. Doesn't it look great? It's coming together pretty nice. So we're about halfway there. Coming right along. She's getting there. These old pop bumpers have seen better days. They're falling apart a little bit. So we got new pop bumper bodies, new pop bumper bases, and new pop bumper skirts, all that good stuff. We're putting them on, putting them back in new. 
Sometimes we put like a red skirt or something, but Joe said he wanted it to be a white skirt this time, so we're going to go with the white skirts. Uh, so we're putting that all back together, and then we have to go underneath and solder the light socket back in and uh, hook the, uh, the ring back up. I'll show you that here in a minute. It'll make it look a lot cleaner. We're on the bottom, so to do the pop bumpers, you have to solder the... Um, you have to solder the lamp sockets back to the wires underneath. And then you have to clean up the switch, get a lot of the soot off of it, and then you have to gap it just right so that whenever it hits the skirt from any of the directions, it makes the switch touch. Um, it should be close, but like it shouldn't be where it should ever um, stick closed. And then you're ready to mount your your uh, pop bumper back. Get that lined up like it goes. Put your nuts back on and whenever it hits it, wham, 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 that's what makes it work. So, we're getting there. So we got those mounted back on and now I'm looking at the switches. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up the bottom of this thing, so. On these old valleys, a lot of the switches, uh, if they're meant to be hit really fast, so like if they're in the direct line of the of the flipper or something, mainly these stand-up switches on the top of the playfield, these red ones, right? The ball can hit those really fast, and uh, whenever it uh, whenever it does, if it hits it fast enough, sometimes the machine won't see it because it just connects for a second. So if you've got one where um, it's doing that, you need to look on the bottom of the switch. I mean, yeah, the bottom of the switch. They put a little capacitor on the bottom. Let me find one that's original. Here you go. So on a valley, it will have this little green capacitor. If that's missing, what will happen is sometimes you won't get um, the switch to register because you hit it too fast and then the ball bounces off of it. It just doesn't have enough time for the strobe to catch it. The uh, the old school way that they strobe the switches in on the Bally MPUs. So on the ones that get hit really fast, Bally added this little this little capacitor, and it basically stretches the pulse out a little bit um, of the switch connecting. I had somebody say that they did it to debounce it. That's not true at all. If you if you take a switch off, if you take this cap off, you'll see that that switch sometimes won't get hit. Or won't get registered and then if you put the cap on it'll fix the problem the, re the reason that they did it was so that it can widen the the pulse out a little bit but it's very common for that switch to go I mean for that cap to short so the way operators would handle the cap shorting is they would just take the cap off so if this cap shorts then this switch will always be stuck on and the game will do weird stuff like you'll get phantom uh, whenever the game starts it starts out where you've already got 100 points or something like that it's going to be one of these capacitors. If you go into the test menu, into the switch test, it'll tell you if a switch is stuck on. And if it is, and it looks like it's not connected, check out that cap. Um, so the, the way that an operator would fix that is he'd just break the cap off. The switch would still work, it just wouldn't work as good, because if you hit it really fast, it wouldn't work. So one thing that you have to do whenever you work on these is you need to go back in and add the switches back in. And if you're... If you're uh, curious about which one is supposed to have it, if you look in the manual, it will show it. Whenever it shows the switch matrix, it'll show a little capacitor on some of the switches. So somebody has went through this one and fixed some of them. So like there's this one, but it's loose. So I got to resolder it back on there, right? Uh, this one's still there on this pop bumper. But if you look, this one's been removed. And if you see the, see the extra lines and, you know, the extra legs that are kind of soldered to that switch still, that's where they broke it off. They broke it off this one. See how the little leg is sticking up in the air? Someone has replaced this one with a very expensive cap, but it'll work like that. And then this one over here, somebody has also replaced with a long-legged one. Now, if you look, it's not on all of them. So like the rollover switches, they don't put it on because the ball will slowly roll over it. It doesn't need the cap. So just on a few of them. And so I have bought some replacements. Look at that bad boy. It is a 473. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> so I'll replace the couple that are missing, um, and then that will be pretty much it for the switches on the bottom. I cleaned them up, not counting the endostroke switches up here. I cleaned them up uh, with a, um, we, we use a worn out file. You don't want to go crazy and file the hell out of these things with a file because once you get the uh, the uh, contact burnished up like that, it'll it's bad. <laughs> so you just want to clean it. You don't want to cut it. You want to clean it. Um, so I've cleaned all the switches and I'm going to solder on those capacitors and then we should be done with the switches on the bottom of the play field and we can move on to all the light bulbs and boy are there a bunch of them. So what I like to do is I turn it off and uh, and then I'll do like a little section of lights at once. So you bend all these back, take the bulbs out and then I like to clean the bottom of the lens because if you don't, uh, basically these incandescent bulbs, they, uh, they get soot on them. So the bottom of the lens gets soot on it. So from the top of the play field, you don't get a, a nice clean look to the light. It has uh, dirt on it. Now, you just go through and check every one of them. But let me show you something. See how this one is working but is real dim? Or you might have one that's not working at all. Typically what that is is the press fitting. See the bottom of the socket there? And how it looks like it's just fit on that little metal bracket? That's a press fitting. So what happens is these things sit for years and years and years and that gets oxidized so it doesn't make good electrical contact. So the way you fix it is you just spin it a little bit. So why did that work? It's because that connection to the to the metal uh, to the metal bracket it just wasn't making good. It's was basically dirty. So whenever you spin it, if it's still nice and tight, which that one is you basically the metal scrapes against the other metal and it makes a nice good electrical connection and no mas problema. Um, there's one over here, let's see if it works for this one. See this one how it's not working? So I'm just going to try to spin the socket a little bit. Voila! And that one's real tight. Whenever I, whenever I twisted it, it bought me. So that's a real good connection now. And if, if it's tight, it'll stay like that. You'll be cool. Now, if it's just filthy and you can tell it's just all screwed up, you probably need to replace the, uh, the socket. Sometimes you will have a socket that's real loose where the, the press fitting is completely broke loose and it's just wobbling around. Those are kind of dangerous because what it'll do is it'll short the... Uh, the two wires together eventually. Whenever it moves just right, it'll short and it'll blow the uh, SCR on the lamp board or blow the fuse and then it takes you a little while to find it. So if you've got one that's real loose where it's kind of hanging apart, go ahead and replace the socket. Alright, so we got it all cleaned up. I also cleaned all the switches like we said, put the little caps on like we were talking about. Um, all of the coils look fine. W weren't we... Uh, Weren't we playing it and everything was working? By look fine, I don't mean they look pretty, right? <laughs> so like this one's dirty, but there's nothing wrong with it, right? So you're just checking to see if everything moves smoothly. Like there's nothing wrong with that coil. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Coils, they don't really wear out. They either work or they don't work. So they'll short or something, but if they if they short together, Usually, well, they'll just stick on and it'll blow a fuse, but usually you can't move the plungers in and out of them. It'll, the plastic inside will melt and uh, you'll have obvious issues. But all these, everything looks cool. I'm not going to do the flippers yet. I'll do that in a later video. That's usually like kind of the last thing we do. Kind of like a little cherry on the top. right? But what I'll do is uh, I'm going to vacuum out the inside again just to get it a little cleaner. Throw away all this trash. And then we'll lay the pin, the play field down, and we'll look at the top of it. Okay, so here's what we look like so far. We're waiting on a few parts, though. So 
I will have to wait on them. But through the magic of YouTube, you won't have to wait. We'll edit them right into this video. Um, my touch-up, I'm not feeling quite so bad about. Because with all the other stuff on it, you notice it a lot less. So I think it looks pretty decent. And the pop bumpers look a lot better with the new bodies and skirts. So it's definitely coming together. So yeah, we ordered some uh, some different plastic parts and stuff that are coming in. We also had, this plastic was cracked, but I had another one because uh, whenever we got this in years ago, I went ahead and ordered that plastic since I knew it was cracked. The pinky one is cracked slightly down at the bottom, but I'm not that worried about it. So we're looking pretty good. Okay, so we'll get the parts in and then I'll finish up the video. Sega, we've got our Sonic one in the background. All right, folks, so let me see. That's a little bit too bright. Let me darken it up so that it looks just like it looks here in person. So you'll get the full effect. That's about it. That's about how it looks to my naked eye. Came out pretty good. So we got our stuff in. We got some little stickers for the spinner. Watch this. So the ball goes through there, right? And there's these arrows up above it. So when the ball does that... <laughs> it's like a little flip book. Uh, we put the new pop bumper caps on. Boy, they're white. Mighty white there. Uh, but it matches the white rubber rings. So it's not that big of a deal. But I kind of wish they'd make some that were a little more yellow. Right? Okay, and we got all the plastics back on. And then we got new lane guides up here at the top. Now these, originally were these. So they originally have a Bally logo on them. Right? See how they get all cracked and everything? You can get these with the Bally logo, but they're like six bucks a piece and they're sold out of them right now. So, uh, I just got the generic ones. It looks like that they're all kind of burnt, uh, that they're... Let me darken this way up so you can see how this looks to the naked eye. It looks more like that to the naked eye. So they they are red. They don't look orange here um, in person. Okay. So I got those looking pretty good. Like I said, wish that was a little better. But once everything's back on, it's not that big of a deal. And then what else did we touch up? Oh, yeah, we touched up some of the pop bumper stuff. That one on the left there has been extensively touched up. Looks pretty decent, though. The one here on the bottom, underneath it, has been touched up. You can tell if you look close enough. And to the side there a little bit, it's been touched up a little bit. But all in all, now remember, at the beginning of this video, we were showing you that it was down to the bare wood around that pop bumper. So you know our dirty little secret that we repainted it, but most people don't. Most people will never see it. All right, so there you go. So that's how the play field turned out. Now, as you can tell, we've got this thing up and running because we have been working on the board. So we're going to go over that on the next video. Uh, the game was already up and playing, but we're going to uh, we're going to work on the um, um, the solenoid board, the MPU. See what's going on with that. We might even be able to figure out when this thing was renovated. It looks like at some point somebody has been through this sucker. That's why it had the clear coat on the play field already. Somebody's been working on it. But we'll check all that out in the next video. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. Tell Matt hello. Hello. Tell Matt hello. <laughs> He's here hanging out with us. Uh, make sure to check out my brother Donnie. Do Matt, have you met my brother Donnie? Yes, I have. You have. Okay. Do you? Did we tell you that we bought a small grocery store? On down in downtown that used to sell expired food. Yep. Yes, that one. Mm -hmm. So you went in there before? Uh, no, it was still in business last time I was there. Okay, so they were selling expired food. You said yes. He's he's telling the truth, people. It was a discount grocery store. So what we're doing is we're renovating it and we're going to rent it. And so we are now to the point where we are trying to build a wall in the middle of the thing because the old wall they cut a hole through it. So we're trying to build it back. And our guys haven't been down there, so we're about one week away from Donnie and I, like getting the 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 trowel and the 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 mortar and just building the damn thing ourselves. We're gonna try it. 
We're going to film it all if we do it. That, you going to watch that? That'll be entertaining. Yeah. So, so see, as Matt says, it's an entertaining uh, channel. So check it out. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we're always doing kind of crazy stuff over there. It's mainly Donnie's channel, but I'm over there a lot too. So check it out. And thank you to everybody that's been using our Amazon links. Matt, have you been using our Amazon links? Yes, I have. Okay. Tell them how easy it is. Well, all I do is I go put everything in my cart, and then I go watch one of Ronnie's videos and click the link <laughs> and hit by now. <laughs> there you go, people. It's that simple. So if you use our link to go to Amazon, it gives us a tip. He gives us a piece of Jeff Bezos' money. And isn't that sweet? Mm. And I, I just like not giving him the money. Yeah, that's true. So it slides a little bit of it over to me. I, I think eventually, if, so if he keeps giving me 3% of everything that people buy, I'll catch him eventually, won't I? Uh, I don't think that's how that works. I think it does, because 3 plus 3 is 6. I'll have 6% of his money then. Yes. Yes, you will. So I'm going to keep going. So really, all I need is for 33 people to buy things, and I'll be Jeff Bezos. There you go. Why has no one done that before? I don't know. I'll have to think about that a little bit. I think that's how it works, though. But thank you for everybody that's been doing that. We appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you on the next one. <clears throat>